long should I teach my child? The doctor said my child is inattentive. Is this you as a parent? Then this video is for you. The field of attention is widely studied and researched. It doesn't just fall under the purview of speech language pathology, but it is also studied in cognitive psychology, in neuropsychology, in neuroscience, in behavior, and even in philosophy. Today, I'm going to tell you two things. The first thing is, how long should you play with your child? How long should you structure an activity for your child? That is the first thing. The second thing I'm going to tell you is, five tips on how to improve your child's attention and five knowledge bombs for you to understand why your child is not paying attention. I'm going to give you an age-wise time, activity time for your child. Stick around for that till the end of the video. Now, subscribe to my channel, like this video and give me a comment about what type of attention problems your child has. Now, I'm going to give you five tips or five knowledge bombs for you to understand your child's attention and attention capacity better. Before you demand attention from your child, did you know there are different types of attention? There's focused attention, there is sustained attention, there is divided attention, there's many types. So what type of attention are you asking from your child? So for learning and for adequate learning to occur, we need to look at focused attention and sustained attention. So focused attention is when the child is focusing entirely on one object or on one activity. Sustained attention is when your child is able to hold the focus for a longer period of time. Even though this is not a hierarchy of attention, you can get an idea that it is a continuum. That is, you must have some amount of focused attention before you go on to the next type of selective attention. So if you are expecting your child to ignore the sound of music and pay attention to an activity, you are asking him to give you selective attention wherein he said he is expected to select your activity and not uh, pay attention to the music now this is a higher form of attention so first your child must have some focused attention to move on to the next level of selective attention so make sure that what you are expecting of your child is clearly known to you skills like divided attention and alternative attention are a little higher so first focus on focused attention and then develop the focused attention to sustain to know what type of attention your child can pay or which level of attention your child is in. Then you will move on to the type of stimulus that you use. So what is the sensory stimulus you're giving him? Are you giving him a visual stimulus? Are you giving him an auditory stimulus? Are you giving him a tactile stimuli? Here a point to note is Children have different learning channels. That is, some children are visual learners. Some children are auditory learn learners. Some children are tactile learners. Your child li likes looking at pictures, likes looking at books, likes looking at uh, letters. Then your child might be a visual learner. But in case your child really likes listening to rhymes and uh, understands rhymes better, uh, understands language in rhymes, understands language in music, then your child might be an auditory listener. So this is how you can know what type of a learner your child is. Okay, so the third tip is knowing the difference between an orienting response and an active engagement in an activity. So what, does it, what do I mean by this? An orientation response is a very basic level of attention turning towards the sound or towards your voice. That is all. That is, it's orienting towards the source of the stimuli. So this is an orienting response. So this is where you have name call, right? And the next type of attention involves active engagement where the child is completely involved in the activity and is processing the stimuli and is processing a response, processing the uh, feelings associated with the stimuli and all of this is happening and the child wants to give a response. So this is active engagement. So you have to know the difference between just an orientation and an active engagement. Now, another common question is, my child doesn't listen to me when I call his name. 
It doesn't turn when I call his name. This might be because you have been calling your child's name too many times in a way to assess him or test him. So he knows that the stimuli is recurring in the environment and it's not something salient and new. So he kind of puts it in the background. Whereas you might find that even if your child is not paying attention to a name call, he might still be actively engaging in activities and toys and play. So just because your child doesn't respond to a name call does not mean he doesn't have attention. Okay. So with this third tip, you now see what, what is the type of attention you're looking for in your child. Are you looking for an orienting response, which is not enough, but it is still needed at a basic level? Or are you looking for active engagement in the activity from your child? The fourth tip is attention is one of the pre-linguistic skills or it's more commonly called joint attention. So attention has been researched and shown to be very important in developing cognition, in developing communication, in developing social emotional skills and in most of the area, domains of development. So training for attention, practicing tasks that involve a lot of focus and concentration is going to be very beneficial to your child. The fifth tip is the most important tip of all. That is, attention should be trained in play. A number of investigations have found that greater attention and attention control is found when learning is in a positive environment without negative reinforcers or without negative emotionality around the play. How this translates to you as a parent is that when you're teaching your child or when you're involved in an activity, do not be too stern, do not be too strict with your child. So instead, you will keep a smiling face, you will have a more open body language and you will use encouraging words to your child like good job, keep this up, you're doing really well, this is a correct response. So all of these positive parenting and encouragement is actually very beneficial to your child's learning and attention. This is called emotionally supportive parenting. So emotionally supportive parenting has shown to increase attention in research. As well, it shows that even if your child is waning from the activity, is moving away from the activity, and in that moment, you're being more emotionally supportive and more encouraging and positive. You see that the refocus of attention happens. That is, even though it's attention is waning, the child is able to refocus attention because of the positive parenting that he is receiving. Not only this, but it is also shown that your positive attitude is internalized by the child and there is more chances of the child replicating your positive behaviors outside as parents who teach our child, uh, most of us are so concerned on the goal and so concerned on the targets that we sometimes assume a very strict personality with our child. But now you see that that is not very helpful for your child and always, always go by a play way naturalistic teaching with your child because that teaches more lasting functional skills for your child and increases motivation, increases engagement with you and develops good social emotional skills for your child. Okay, now coming to the second part of the video that you've been waiting for. How long is my child's attention span? How long should I create an activity for? Okay, so I'm going to give you a small uh, cheat formula for this. Okay, so you will take the age of your child and multiply it by 2 which will give you the minimum minutes and multiply it by 3 which will give you the maximum minutes of attention that your child can pay. So for example, a 2 year old can pay attention from 4 to 6 minutes. A 3 year old can pay attention from 6 to 9 minutes. So it varies like that. So even though these are the norms, you cannot always expect a replication of the timing with your child. So if your child is only being able to pay attention for 10-15 seconds, then what you would do is you would slightly slowly try to increase the time window. You wouldn't force him to pay attention for an entire 8 minutes but you would initially start with 30 seconds. Do activities for 30 seconds and then move to one, 1 minute. So slowly push the window your child is able to do. Okay, so in this video we've seen 5 knowledge bombs and 5 tips that you can use 
with your child when you are trying to train for attention and I have also told you the time span or attention span you have to look for in activities. Give me a comment on what was your takeaway from this video. What was something important that you understood in this video. So for the next week, I think it will be more helpful to give you more activities and implementation tips for attention. If you would like that, let me know in the comments so I can make a video on that. Apply these tricks and let me know how it works. Till then, let's meet in the next video. Bye.